All right. Now, in your book, they talk a little bit about some lenders, instead of giving you percentage caps, because people have a hard time with that, they actually will give you a dollar cap. Okay, the most it can change is a thousand a period and or four hundred a period and three thousand over the life of the loan. So some banks will quote it instead of your caps being a percentage, they will quote the caps being a dollar amount so that Andy can go, well, it started at 600. The most it's ever going to go up is 200 a month and a thousand in the lifetime. So I know my highest payment is going to be 1600. So some lenders do it by dollars rather than by percentage. Okay. Now the fourth item for an arm is this thing called a conversion rate. That's supposed to say conversion. What a conversion rate is, is a method for the consumer to convert his adjustable rate to a fixed rate. So suppose that my bore uh, that LIBOR has gone up to 20, and here comes Andy's payment behind it. 1.3, 2.3, 3.3. Andy goes, oh my God, it's gonna go to six. I wanna convert right now from that adjustable rate to my 3.3 that I've got and convert it to a fixed rate. So for the rest of my life of my loan, it's now fixed. It won't adjust. It won't go up like he thinks it's going to do. Now, the bad part about that is, Kristen, but bringing your point back in, he locks in and converts it to a fixed rate and LIBOR goes back down here. He does not get the benefit of going down because he converted to a fixed rate here and that's where it stays, all right? By the way, just so you guys know, the cost to convert it is a discount point. It's the difference between what the investor wanted and what he actually got. So that investor is sitting there going, yeah, LIBOR is going to go up here, and I'm going to make a bunch of money off Andy, right? Andy fixed it. The investor got cheated out of this much money. There is a calculation called the present value of money. They will do and say, okay, Andy, to convert from an arm to a fixed, we're going to charge you 1.1 discount rate points. 1.1% of the loan to do that. And that is to make up for all that lost the investor was going to get if it would have went to 9.3. So that's another point where place where discount rates come in. All right. That was a lot in that. Got it? Adjustable rate. Are we good? All right. Now let's look at this next one. Perhaps I feel that this next one, this is my own opinion, is the dumbest loan there is. It is called a growing equity mortgage. Remember, we talked about this level payment loan a minute ago, and I told you it is designed so that every month your payment is the same. That allows you to budget your expenses so you can say, well, my house payment seven fifty, and yeah, blah, 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 whatever. There is a second loan or another type called a growing equity mortgage. The short slang term for that is a GEM, G-E-M, growing equity mortgage. It is a scheduled increase in your monthly payments. So now your monthly payments look like this. The only good thing about it is because your payments go up every month, 
you actually pay the loan off quicker. So therefore, you pay less interest rate over the life of your loan. In this growing equity mortgage, it may start out at 750 for the first year, then next year it goes to 760, then 800, then 825, and blah, 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 blah. And so you get to the end, you may be paying 1200 a month, but it pays off, the interest rate is less than that interest rate. So let me ask you a question, and by a show of hands, you can tell me. Which is a better loan? 30 years with a lower monthly payment, which would allow you to drive a Ferrari or have a pool, or 15 years, you don't get the pool, but you save 30 or 40,000 in interest over the life of the loan. Which is a better loan? How many think one and how many think two? It's a trick question. Because the answer is they're both good. It depends on you. There are people that will say, I would rather save $40,000 over the life of my own so I have money to retire with and I'm fine driving my own brown pinto. There are some people that will say, you know what? I want the nice Hummer car and I'll pay the lower house payment for longer, but I'll get a really cool car and we're gonna go on vacations. So they make both of these. And the answer is, it just depends on that client. The guy that works for me, Nino, the technology guy, he got a 10-year loan. He wanted his house paid off as fast as he could, all right? Because he was one of those, I want to save money for the future, and yada, 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 all right? The reason that I believe that this is a bad loan is here's the problem. As these go up, you are required to make that new payment. What happens if you have a job issue and all of a sudden you can't make the payment? Whereas if you went ahead and stayed on this loan and then we all know that every month you could add a little bit more if you have a good month and just throw it in. And that way, if you have a problem, you're only required to pay that lower 700 amount. Everybody get what I'm saying? You can always add extra principal to your monthly payment. Every time you add principal, you shorten the time frame to pay it off, right? What happens if I lengthen the time frame on my loan? What happens to the monthly payments? They go down, right? I saw something the other day that shocked the crap out of me. There is a 78-month car payment. Six and a half years. And the only way they reason they do that is so the payment on this Cadillac could be low enough for us to afford it. When I was a kid, my dad would get in car loans on 24 months. You can't do that on a $50,000 car or 60, which they all are that cost now. You have to lengthen the time that will lower the payment. Did you guys know there is a 40-year amortization loan out there? That will lower it even more. And get this, China has what they call a generational loan. It's 60 years. It's taken out by the father and paid off by the son because the price of land is so expensive the only way they can make it affordable is to make that loan 60 years in length. It's called a generational loan, all right? So that's a growing equity mortgage. The key here is it is a scheduled increase in payments. 
you guys know when you get the loan, first 12 months are this, the second 12 months are this, the third 12 months, all right? That's a growing equity. Now, one other one, relatively new, and the product is a good idea if you think about it. There have kind of been people that are cheating this and cheating the elderly, and so a lot of people will say, the reverse mortgage is a bad thing. It's really not. And there are a whole bunch of requirements that we're not going to get into because you don't need to know. For instance, both of both parties or the owner of the property has to be of retirement age. So 62 and a half, 63, something like that. And basically what that person is doing is selling the equity back to the bank and instead of making a monthly payment of $750, they are literally receiving a payment of $750, all right? I used to have a really cool joke about this until it happened to me, and then it's not funny anymore. Because as the person sells the equity back to the bank, who's really getting screwed in this deal? The kids? The, the heirs, exactly. Yeah. Because watch this. If the person was to die here, look how much loan they have. Look how much equity. But no, they get a reverse and they die over here. Now look how much loan they have versus how much equity. There's less money to spread out. When my father passed away, my mother started a reverse mortgage and was taking all of the equity out of their house because she was on a fixed income. Now, there's not a child in the world that would ever begrudge this, so I'm joking, okay? Just think, know that I'm joking. But now mom was getting money out of the house that her and dad paid into all of the life of my brother and I growing up. It's called a reverse mortgage. Now, at no time does the bank ever own the property, right? Because of what we talked about yesterday, the bank has a lien on the property, but they never own it. Okay, now in your book on page 221 is a chart that I want to look at. This is called the mortgage factor chart. This is an easy way for you guys to help tell your client what their monthly payment is going to be okay that chart is broken into two halves as you can see and the interest rate on the left column starts at three and goes all the way down to nine percent then they have two additional columns called the 15-year mortgage and a 30-year why those two because those are the two most common, 15-year AM, a 30-year AM. And here's how this works. Everybody take the example of $220,000 loan. All right? The first thing you need to understand is this is a number based on a dollar for every thousand. So simply, you would take the amount of the loan, which was 220,000. How many thousands are in 220,000? 220. All right, at 6% interest rate, everybody find the 6% column. It's the top row in the right column 
and for a 30-year mortgage, what is the factor number that's listed there? 6.00. Everybody see it? Thumbs up when you see it. So now what you would do is take the 220 times that factor of six, and you're going to get the number $1,320 a month payment. So if your client said, I got a 6% loan for a 30 year AM, and I borrowed 220,000, how much is my house payment? It's $1,320. This chart is a reproducible chart. You can search it on Google. It's a, it's a numerical chart, it's there. This is not any kind of secret knowledge by this book. This is a common multi, uh, mortgage factor chart. <coughs> we use this too, to help a client. So if you said my rate is 3%, on a 15 year mortgage, that number you see there, 3% 15 year AM is 6.91. You would take 6.91 times 220, and that would tell you what their payment would be on that one. So, what you can literally do now is if your client says, Well, how much is the payment on a 30 year versus a 15 year? Well, take 3% on a 30 year, it'd be 4.22 times 220, and then do the one on the 15 year, 6.91, and the difference is the difference in the monthly payment for them. Good thing to know, intent. All right. <clears throat> 